If you have a laser engraver or thinking about getting one, watch this video for some tips on how to use it. I've had this laser cutter for a little over a month now, so I have learned some things that would have been helpful to know in the beginning. So I put a video together um, on tips and tricks on how to use a laser engraver. This one is by Adam Stack. I purchased it off of Amazon and I do have the link down below. It was roughly $300. Um, but what I have learned has been invaluable. So let's get started. A solid flat work area is a must, but in addition, um, the lines on your work area are um, invaluable. So I had an old four foot folding table that Ross took the top of off of and we put a piece of MDF on it. But I took a Sharpie and I drew two inch squares. So just using a regular uh, straight edge, I drew a two inch grid and that is super helpful when you're trying to line up a project, you have straight edges to follow. So I would highly suggest getting a work surface that you can draw a grid on so it makes it super easy to line up your project. Painter's tape is a must when you're um, doing your projects, especially on leather. You can see leather doesn't always lay flat. So just take some painter's tape Tape it down flat on all of the edges so that you have a nice smooth surface. But even on your wood projects, tape it just a little bit in the corner. If your table gets bumped, I have mine set up in the garage. If your table gets bumped or something by a dog going by, at least your project is lined up and held in place. To line up your project can be a little tricky. I have the machine on, so you might be able to hear the, the background humming, but I'm gonna show you how I'm lining up this ornament. So I already have it loaded into my laser gerbil program. So I'm just gonna record directly um, from our camera to the screen. So I have it loaded up, but I'm gonna show you how I do that. So um, you can do file, if you have to make a change on your file and you want to do the same exact one, if you reload, which is the third one down, reload last file, it's going to take you to these screens. Um, and these screens would show up if you're opening a new file, but to make an adjustment, if you, when I am doing this ornament, I want the whole thing to be burned, that's called line to line tracing. If I want it just to do outlines, I select vectorize and it's just gonna go on the outside. This would be if you're going to cut your project out. Um, I haven't done much cutting. I've done just um, basically the engraving. So here's line to line and it has a quality on here. I have messed with that a little bit and I haven't seen a whole bunch of difference. So I've just kept it at 10. If your project um, needs some adjusting, that's where you would do that from. So from this screen, you hit next and then this little tiny um, box comes up called target image. And on the target image is where we show, um, where we designate the size of the project. It's how we tell it if you want to engrave or cut. And this took me forever to find. So it's a little book over here on the right hand side. You click it and then there's a drop down menu um, that tells you which kind of material you want. This one has acrylic, aluminum, bamboo, basswood, hardwood, paper, and mirrors. Um, so I basically kept on uh, basswood. I found that that's pretty much standard for all of them, but this is how you differentiate if you want it to cut or engrave. There's an action button. And so if you want to cut it, then this number here changes to three passes, meaning it will cut three times with that laser. You will have the option when you're all done to do it one more time. Um, so there is the tip um, on keeping your project taped down there. Um, that helps if you wanna run it again. So here is where you change it to engrave or cut. So I'm gonna go back to engrave and I have it on basswood and then I hit apply. 
right here is where you set up the measurements. So I'm gonna show you this screen, but I'm gonna show you the measurements here just in a second. So this is where you would enter it and it's in millimeters. So on this one, I have 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and I'm going to hit create. And so there is the outline of what I'm going to be doing. I'm gonna move the camera back and I'm, um, the buttons on the bottom of the um, software, um, there's a corner button, a focus button, and then a frame button. And so when I say um, refer to those, that's what I'm referring to. Okay, for measuring your product, one thing that I have learned um, on different projects is I often would measure how big my piece was, not how big I wanted my engraving to be. On this one, I do want it to be the entire ornament, and so that's why I set it to 100 millimeters wide. And so I have that set to be 100 millimeters. Now we have to line up the laser. And um, I'm sure there's different ways to do this, uh, but this is what I've learned. So if you have any other tips, I would love to hear them. Okay, you can free motion your laser wherever you want it. For the height, I put just like a, a craft stick. I drop down my laser to where it is flat on the um, stick. Then I move it up just a squish. And so that is a pretty good, yep, that's a little tight. Because the, the wood you're going on might need, not be 100% flat, so you have to make sure there's room on the whole thing. And so now we need to line it up. What I have found is I line it up pretty much on the lower left corner, kind of where I think the lower left corner would be. And on the software, I hit the focus button, and you can see that a light lit up there. On the software, there's a frame button that is for a circle. So I'm going to tell it to go on the outside, if this is going to frame my project. And so look at right there, that is way off. It's going to go off of my project. So I don't have anything taped down yet. So I just move my project around and around. Instead of trying to adjust the laser, I adjust my project. So I'm gonna tell it to go again. And we had about an eighth inch on this side. Okay, and it's way too far that way still, so I'm gonna go straight over. Okay, I think we're getting closer. Let's do it one more time. And now I have to make sure I'm looking at the top and bottom. So this is just for lining up. It looks like I'm a little too close to the bottom. So I just moved it down just to squish. Okay, I like where that lays. So I'm gonna take pieces of painter's tape and tape down so it stays in spot. And the reason is, for one, if the table gets bumped, or another is if it didn't go dark enough and I want it to tell it to go again, I don't want my project to move. So back to the software here, I'm just gonna tell the green button to tell it to go. At the bottom of the screen is a, a spot that says estimated time, so that'll tell you how long you, um, it will take to do the project. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to line up a rectangle project. So I'm going to be putting this on a cutting board. This is a composite cutting board and I have marked an X or a cross in the center. And you would think that it would be super um, straightforward to line this up, but I've done enough trial and error. It's not as uh, straightforward as I would think. So I gap it with a craft stick that's Pretty good, but you need, okay, see right there, it bows up and it's too tight. So we're gonna make it so it's nice and loose um, to go across the whole project. So I first test my height. Let's see what we are back here. That looks pretty good. 
The design area for this one, I have told the computer, is 140 cent millimeters. Sorry, 140 millimeters. Soap makes a great um, way to mark your project. So I have a line here on the bottom because I'm using my center mark to come up with the, the 70, which is the halfway mark. I'm going to move this out of the way. And when it's 140 millimeters wide, I, I'm sorry, tall, it was 130. 50 almost, right around 150 wide. So that would be 75. And so I'm gonna make a mark right here. So what that is telling me, this is the lower left corner of my project. Okay, so if this is the lower left corner, I'm gonna move my laser to approximately there. I'm going to tell it to focus. And the light came on. Yep, the light is on, so that's focusing. And now I'm gonna tell it to frame the project. I have found the easiest way is to manipulate the location of my project instead of manipulating where this stop and starts. So I'm gonna go down, and we're gonna try that again. Okay, I have a left mark, I'm gonna make a right mark. So that'll help me a little bit. And I'm going to tell it to frame it. So we're going to be watching that light. And it went a little bit to the left of that. So I'm going to scoot over. I want it to come straight down on this soap mark. So not quite there yet. And here's our bottom mark. Pretty good. I'm going to scoot down a little bit more and frame it once again. So there's no limit to how many times you can tell it to frame. So it's just once you start burning, you can't change your mind. So be very meticulous and make sure you have it lined up. Okay, the computer says this is going to take about 45 minutes, so I'll uh, show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, just came back. It did take 46 minutes, um, and I haven't moved anything just to double check, but it looks fantastic. So I can just move my laser out of the way, and I have my cutting board. Each wood I'm finding is a little different. So if you tape down your project and it doesn't burn as dark as you would like, if it's taped down, most of the time I'm able to hit for it to do it one more time and it'll darken it up. And it'll just repeat on the same spot, getting it a little darker. Here's a better shot of seeing what it looks like going it over the second time. Wanted to address leather. I have done quite a bit on leather. I just set it at the um, basswood setting on the laser uh, gerbil setting uh, software. So I just do the basswood. I have done it to where it does a cutout on leather. Anytime you do any cutout, put a piece of metal underneath your project because it cuts straight through it. Um, so you need to have a piece of metal, but leather turns out really good and just wet it afterwards and scrub, scrub, scrub. Otherwise um, your burnt leather is gonna just keep coming off as a residue. So I just wet it. If you've ever worked with leather, at that point you can't touch it anymore because any mark on it will leave a mark on your leather. So uh, wet, uh, Scrub it off with water and let it dry. Well, I hope these tips have helped you. Uh, I sure have enjoyed uh, our laser cutter. Again, the link is down below. Uh, if you have any tips, I would love to hear them. The only way I'm learning is by trial and error. But as always, thank you for watching DIY on the House.